Before we get to your scheduled video, please remember that likes and comments tell YouTube to promote our work to other people, and subscribing to the channel tells you when something new drops. You can also head to the link tree in the description to peruse my books, join us on Discord, or support us on Patreon. You can get episodes of Journey of Wrestling and Violent Profiles early, as well as a load of other treats. Even just a dollar a month earns you a name drop for being cool. Thanks for listening, and enjoy the show. Greetings and salutations, fellow pieces of explosive footwear. It is I, Eric J. Chucky, joined as always by the boy. Nice. I'm an exploding shoe? Yeah, man. Hey. This is the Two Nerds Podcast. Before we get into talking about AEW's Double or Nothing 2023, uh, let's talk about what's cool. Guy from Ohio. Yeah. Passion Killer 7-Eleven. Yeah. Rob? Indeed. I think he's new. Um, no. Oh, okay. Uh, this is... Well, I guess this is the spoiler-free review, except for what I said in the opening. Um, I, 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 it was good. Yeah, it was a good show. Uh, there were some matches I didn't like super well, but like there was only one match that I would categorize as a bad match, and I'm going to be honest, that, that was even less of a match and more of an angle forced upon the Federation by virtue of one of the competitors being too injured to really go. And that sucks, but it is what it is. Yeah, um, it was a very predictable show, as we've said before. Predictable is not always wrong. There were a couple calls I missed. I put my predictions in the Discord, which we have, and you can join. There were a couple calls I missed. Uh, there was only one call I missed, I believe. And one I couldn't have possibly made. Well, um, yeah, but like that one's... Even then, I got really close. Yeah, you did. Uh, but the more the show went on, especially leading into the match, I was like, eh, no, I think they're going to go the other way. Um, so, you know, but that, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's fine. Sometimes the predictable call is the right call, as we say here. And I don't necessarily think this was as good as Revolution. Um, I believe that was the previous pay-per-view this year. Um, main event wasn't as good. No, certainly. Um, neither of them. But, like, it was... I, I, I would say that, like, I don't remember Revolution enough to really comment, like, firmly... Um, which says that it probably didn't stick in my head super well. I think, yeah, I think both, like, big matches for me were better at the last show. Hanger Mox was better at the mm -hmm. last show. And, um, MJF, uh, Danielson was better. This one has, you know, good matches, but I think, I think it's more that, like, the highs weren't as high, but the lows weren't as low. Because I remember the lows from that show being shit. Um, maybe. Uh, I don't remember the lows as much. Uh, again, for those of you who don't uh, hang out in our Discord, um, yeah, leading into this, we stopped watching Rampage, especially with the news of Collision coming. Rampage is, is completing its de destiny. They canceled Dark and Dark Elevation and Dark Revolution and Dark Aside, so uh, all that's left is Rampage to be their heat, uh, and they're making an actual another two-hour show to be the other good show, so Rampage is Heat now, and I don't watch Heat. Uh, <laughs> Rampage has always been uh, sort of... Uh, kind of Heat, yeah. A lipstick on a Heat. Um, eh, lipstick on a shotgun Saturday night. That's more fair. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, the impending Muffin Man return is... Man, do we have mixed feelings. I want to be upset about it, but I know he's going to win me back. Yeah. I like so much abused girlfriend. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back. I, I am the what do they call those? The Wojaks, the Yes Deer. Yeah, yeah. same. Like mm -hmm. it, it's time for my 3 p.m. dick flattening. Yeah. I guess he's just so good at his job. Not wrestling. He's not as good at wrestling as he was back in the day, but he's still just as good on a microphone. And he, so he's gonna win me back. He's done it before when I should have known better. He's an arrogant prick. That's never changed. But he got me. He got me, and I know he'll do it again. So I can't be that mad because I'll just sound stupid later. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's basically how I feel about the whole situation. And also, everything is just sort of hanging in the air. We don't know exactly what's happening. It gives me a lot of uh, anxiety, I guess is the best way to put it. I'm looking forward to seeing how it shakes out. Because uh, Collision might give some time for other people who I really like who don't get a lot of screen time to get some. And that's great. I'm looking forward to the breath I'm allowed to take after it shakes out. Yeah. Even if, if it shakes out terribly, I'll at least go, ah, good, now I know that it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Knowledge is power. Yeah. 
Um, but uh, let's let's go ahead and get into this event. I, I don't think uh, either of us have a whole lot to say about anything. Cue the two-hour podcast. Uh, but there's no sense preambling any more than we already have. So, to the preamble. Uh, on the uh, buy-in. Uh, <laughs> uh, there was only one match on the buy-in. Uh, and again, we watched the, act- we watched the buy-in. Because AEW does good pro wrestling. Um, and it was uh, Hardys and Hook versus Ethan Page and the Guns. And I believe the stipulation is if the Hardys and Hook win, it's fully reversed and now Ethan Page belongs to Matt Hardy? Yes. Okay. That's okay. Well, I mean, hopefully it'll mean more camera time for Ethan Page. So, um, This was the best I've seen the Guns. Wrestle. They they uh, the guns held their end. They didn't just hold up their end of this match. They held up this match. This was the best guns match I've ever seen. Oh, and they needed to because Jeffrey Nero Hardy does not need to be in a wrestling ring right now. And that's not just my moral opinion. He is wrestling at the speed of a, an old man shitting his pants as he walks through the save a lot. Look, I know how good Jeff Hardy used to be. This the man who's wrestling in the ring is a fine veteran wrestler. He's. A little slow, a little ponderous, but he's an older guy, so you give it you give it to him. No big deal. But I remember Jeff Hardy. It makes me sad to watch this version I of Jeff Hardy. I remember Jeff Hardy from nine months ago. No, that they were about the same. He was a little bit better, and that's sad. <laughs> maybe it's ring rust. Maybe it's the new lower impact style he's wrestling. Except that he did an ill-advised swanton off the top rope onto a stack of three guys and looked like he broke himself in half. But he didn't do nine of those. So that is, in fact, lower impact. I guess, impact. and he kept his fucking shirt on. And so... he did it off the turnbuckle, not off a ladder. Sure. He didn't do the full hardy. It's the sting now. He does the sting now. There's a difference. Sting doesn't break all his bones when That's he does true. that. That's true. He's just a powerful old man. Uh... I really wanted to see the Guns and, and Ethan Page win here because I'm a big fan of all of their work, but they did not, as predicted. Uh, the Guns were not ready to be tag champs, but that never meant I disliked them. I actually liked them quite a bit. Uh, and Ethan Page deserves more than he's getting. The man the man is great. He does. He's a good promo. He's uh, a good wrestler. This is the kind of... Ethan Page is the kind of talent that I'm hoping Collision gives breathing room to. Yeah. Um... I have nothing bad to say about Hook. He did a great job. Uh, the only bad things I have to say about Matt Hardy are that, that, that he thought this up, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, Look, you know. Hook is, uh, well, a non-existent promo, but he wrestles like he has literal Spider-Man powers in addition to looking like Tom Holland. So, uh, I love Hook. He's great. Uh, the Hardys and Hook win. Uh, this match didn't overstay its welcome. It was on the pre-show. It's 15 minutes. One of the longer matches of the night, actually. Yeah, it didn't overstay its welcome because it was actually good. Like, yeah. Like I said, the guns were really kicking ass. Ethan Page is always a quality talent. Hook's always a quality talent. And Matt Hardy was not bad. And Jeff didn't do too much to get in the way. They left him outside the ring a lot. Most of the match. Smart He, he spent a lot of Smart time move. laying down. Good, good call. Thinking about drugs. Um... And then they did for the uh, a really cringe opening ceremony for uh, the Owen Hart. I I turn I almost cringed fully inside out. It was, do not give that woman a hot mic. I, she seems very nice. She seems like a fun mom, but that is the wrong energy to bring to a wrestling pay per view. I'm sorry. That's a heel promo. She accidentally did a heel promo. <laughs> Uh, however, Tony Khan's hat saved it. So. Yes, Riz Tony with his fucking fedora. <laughs> he was so proud of his hat. God, he was so it was proud. simultaneously the cringiest thing I've ever seen, and the and like one million percent Riz. Yeah, uh, I, and and please understand, we don't throw that word around lightly. It's not we're not Gen Z. Cringe. I use that for things that literally yeah. make me do that reaction. Yeah, same. If I, I literally cringe, that is what is cringe. I took longer making a snack because I didn't want to listen. <laughs> To the promo, uh, but I did stop in to see Tony's hat, and it was worth it. Uh, you know, while we're here, uh, commentary all night was amazing. Yeah, uh, the like for, for the top half of the evening, they had Jr. Uh, Taz and Excalibur, the Man in the Mask, and then halfway point, Jr. goes and takes a nap and has his Metamucil, and Tony Schiavone comes in and does the back half. I don't think you want to take your Metamucil before a nap. That's a great way to end up being Jeff Hardy. Look, I'm not here to judge okay. JR's life. Yeah, okay, you know. Uh, but 
Um, like, uh, both halves, different energy, but great energy. Yeah. Commentary was on fire all night. They made the show much better. They had a great time. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we opened up. The, the rest of the, the pre-show was uh, entrances for... For the, the opener. Black which Jack Battle Royal. Yeah, they were doing a Black Jack Battle Royal. They did entr- entrances for everybody in it because they put them all in the pre-show. So this fucking nothing Battle Royal gets to have all their full entrances and it doesn't take up any actual pay-per-view time. Gets you hyped for the show. You see everybody who's going to be in the match. You get to see all the cool entrances. Honestly, fucking five-head move. Yeah. A+. plus. Um, this was a fun one. There were a lot of people in it. Um... I suppose I could run down the order of eliminations. And, I don't and, and, feel and, like that's necessary. Well, I know. It's, it's literally down here. It's just real fast. Uh, uh, I will say that um, not everybody got in the ring at first, and thus were not technically in the Battle Royal until they got in the ring. A, a fun move to keep the uh, ring from starting off as being a uh, mosh pit, which is one of the downfalls of the Battle Royal, as opposed to the Royal Rumble model. Sometimes a battle royal will start with a mosh pit ring, and it just it's messy, and you can't follow anything. I liked the it was mostly heels hanging outside the ring, and they yeah. solely would trickle in over the next few minutes. I don't hate that. Um, as I go through the people who were eliminated, if there's something we have to say about them, we'll stop and we'll, we'll talk about it. Sounds good. Uh, Tony Nice, Ari Divari, Commander, who I believe you were excited about the way he eliminated himself, basically. Yeah. Um, one of the people in our Discord uh, was Nostradamus. Uh, and called this before it happened. That person then went on to call went on to call like three more things that happened over the course of the night. They they have absolute prophecy powers, and I, I uh, it's good. Um, but uh, I was excited because he was right. Yeah. <laughs> he did the big rope run, and someone went, "Well, I'll just shove you off the ropes." That's a really stupid thing to do in a in a in a battle royal, and it was, and he did. So uh, I. Commander is an incredible acrobat. I, he does the same moves. I'm, I'm already he hasn't, tired of it. He hasn't super impressed me in the room. No. Uh, and he's got room too. It's not like I hate him or anything. But uh, mm. Kip Sabian, uh, crime that he was eliminated that early. Uh, he did some good heel work though, keeping up his rivalry with Orange Cassidy that will never die. I would have been fine for him to win it, to be honest. Yeah, same. Uh, Dave Grohl, the Blade, the Butcher, Bandito. Um, uh, the Bandito spot was great while he was doing his stalling brain yes, buster. He did his stalling brain buster and everyone and their mother tried to stop him, but all the other luchadors in the match all like formed the Lucha Alliance to protect Bandito getting his shit in. Yeah, it was great. Uh, Lee Moriarty, Trent Beretta, Keith Lee, um, who got eliminated by Brian Cage. They really put over Brian Cage in this match, which I was very happy about. Well, if you get big guys in a battle royal, you want to make them look... Good, because that's the logic of the match. And also, Swolverine deserves more fucking screen time. I, I agree on both accounts. Uh, it's just not a thing I've seen WWE do a lot, and we've been covering a lot of Royal Rumbles. Yeah, this is a good contrast. This is just a random-ass battle royal, and it was more entertaining than all the Royal Rumbles we've watched so far in our big retrospective. Yeah, this was a solid one. Uh, Ray Fenix, Juice Robinson, Jay White... Uh, Ricky Starks, Brian Cage, Dustin Rhodes, while wow, he stayed in for a while, Penta, and uh, Big Bill, who was another standout in this contest, and Taz finally explained to me the origin of his name, which, I, you know, you guys aren't in the Discord. It's the deep lore. Yeah, if you're not on the Discord, you don't know that I hate Big Bill's name. It's the dumbest name ever. It makes me think of that meme cat who's like, I'm Big Billy. You can look it up on the internet, uh, which is where you are right now. Um, but uh, apparently, he is big... And his name is Bill. Thanks, Taz. You really, you really helped us out. Yeah, I, I no, honestly, his performance here really like it's overshining the stupid name Big Bill, and I appreciate that. Like he's a, he's returning to his natural state. He is the he is the you know, the the heavy for a tiny man uh, who is cocky. That is that is the natural resting state of your of your large William. Yeah, and he's doing it again. Um, and that. Uh, match ended, and then there was a one-on-one match that started immediately after. That's a joke. It was just an amazing little tag-on between Orange Cassidy and Swerve Strickland. Uh, yeah, they decided to tag like a little four-minute, just amazing, maybe maybe even longer, yeah. uh, match between Orange Cassidy and Swerve Strickland at, to who was going to win, just they were the final two. Uh, Orange eventually takes it, but goddamn, now do I really want to see Orange Cassidy versus Swerve Strickland one-on-one. Oh, yeah. one. that, that'll be great. I'll that was A-plus shit. Great work. 
Um, George Cassidy just can't have an international title defense without putting a banger in it. Even if it's a battle royal, he's going to fit that banger in there somewhere. I, I would like to time travel back to a couple of years ago when we started watching this show, and I was like, man, I like Orange Cassidy. Uh, and he was being booked poorly, and now... You know, now he's no. being booked correctly. Yeah, he's had a run of his career, probably. Um, then we went into the unsanctioned match with Sabu as the special guest enforcer. I'm really glad he didn't do a triple jump moonsault. No, he, but he did um, try and kill himself uh, by doing a top rope move with his dress shoes. Uh, <laughs> through a table, wasn't it? Through a table, yeah. yeah. I think it was Hager he put through a table. Um, but, like, so, uh, they're still outnumbered, three to, like, four, uh, with, um... Five. Five, yeah, three to five, excuse me, uh, with Sabu there. But Sabu is so powerful, he managed to get all of the rest of the Jericho Appreciation Society away. Mm -hmm. He, he fended them all off into the back, him and Roderick Strong, with his sheer Sabu powers, and they didn't show back up. The WWE, if someone has a big stable that they largely use to win matches, and then you introduce a thing which is intended to neutralize the stable and make it so that they can't interfere in the match, like, maybe the referee throws them out in the middle of the match. Uh, and maybe, like, uh, ejects them from ringside so they can't be there anymore. Or in this case, you know, someone else battles them to the back, to, to clearly to make it, a, you know, a one-on-one -on -one contest. Um, don't then just have them come back for no reason. Uh, th th this match, they didn't do that. You know why? Because that's stupid. Uh, anyway, uh, unrelated rant. <laughs> um, if you haven't come back for a reason, I feel like that's okay. That's fine. Yeah. It's it's just... It just feels like an unnecessary um, swerve, I guess. Um, quite unlike the swerve in the last match, which was critical. Or the uh, swerve in the Battle Royal. He's great. That's what it meant, yeah. Um, but uh, the, the rest of this, actually, speaking of the WWE, felt a lot like... Um, uh, Johnny Gargano versus that obnoxious man. You know, it really did. They, yeah. they, they seemed to have very similar beats. Nobody brought a baby to the arena, which I appreciated. But yeah. um, uh, Britt came out and got some vengeance on Jericho. and um, Then Soraya came out and fought Britt, and then they fought to the back, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. Uh, and otherwise, it was a pretty good match. There was a, a terrible fire extinguisher spot, because if you're in a Chris Jericho match where weapons are allowed... It is the rules that you have to have a really terrible, poorly timed fire extinguisher spot. I don't think any of them have ever gone well, and no. he's going to keep doing them. Yeah, he really loves fire extinguishers. Yeah, at Although, one point, yeah, in the match, no, he, just, <laughs> he just decided that the fire extinguisher time was here, so he just began spraying it into the air while yelling. <laughs> I appreciated that. Yeah, it, it, great. It seemed like he just really wanted to get the fire extinguisher over, and, and that was his And effort. it wasn't over enough, and he was upset about it. Um... Adam Cole won, uh, which I expected. I also expected it might finish the feud if Adam Cole won. But it seems they're continuing to at least uh, Wednesday, probably longer. Probably, most certainly longer. Yeah. Um, I expected Jericho to win this uh, via some manner of bullshittery. Um, and I expected the feud to continue. I was also half right. Uh, because Adam Cole won, but the feud is continuing. Um. As far as unsanctioned matches go, this wasn't bad. There wasn't like a... I like the referee stoppage ending. I always like the referee stoppage ending if the person who is busy beating ass wins. Not if you get disqualified for beating ass too hard the only... in an ass-beating contest. The only part of it I didn't like is that this was an unsanctioned match, so the referee stopping it didn't make much sense. Well, the referee declared Adam Cole the winner. Sure, sure. That's, that's what that... If, if, if referee stoppage means the person who is, who is you know... Winning at the time wins the match. You, they've just declared them though. It's a it's a victory by knockout by another by another phrase. Sure, I, I don't hate it. I just would have made more sense if it were just a hardcore match, a no disqualification. Match. They don't really do many of those. They usually do unsanctioned for that particular right. Slot. Yeah, it just it, it messes with the suspension of disbelief. I well, don't think it I mean, breaks it, but it messes with. It. I don't I don't know that I agree. It doesn't do so any more so than the ref counting the pinfall. Well, the ref is there to count the pinfall, but, like, they, they literally sign contracts that hold AEW no account. So, like, why would the ref... 
Unless it's just out of the humanity in her heart. Yeah, uh, by God, that man has a family. He has to go do a cruise. Yeah, but it's Chris Jericho. <laughs> he throws fire in people's faces. <laughs> Look, do I wish that Aubrey Edwards was nice enough to let Adam Cole sit on Chris Jericho's face and fucking work him over like a mob enforcer for a little longer? Yeah, I, I mean, I do mark for that a little bit. But, like, it doesn't... For me, it doesn't harm the match at all because... It's the referees stopping the match to declare a winner. Sure. That is, in fact, their only job, and they did it. Yeah, I mean, overall, it was pretty minor. It's not a huge deal. Just, I don't know. I, I, you could have done that. Look, it wasn't the guns versus FTR. Uh, speaking of which, uh, FTR uh, versus uh, Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal for the titles. That was totally a thing that was going to happen. Um, I'm going to be brief about this. This is one of the dumbest fucking builds to a match I've ever seen. Ah, uh, oh, you've seen some dumb builds, brother. I know the wrestling you've watched. I feel like that's an unfair statement. All right, there was <laughs> one point in this build that was one of the dumbest fucking things I've ever seen. Okay, explain. Um, a blinded uh, Dax Harwood. Um, oh, oh, this is going to be th that rant. Okay, go ahead. Go. Kyle drove uh, Mark Briscoe, who he thought was literally anyone else, as a reaction. And I don't, I don't understand a universe in which your go-to assault is the pile driver. It is a complicated move. Not, speaking entirely in kayfabe and not about safety, it is a complicated move. And how do you expect that that is? You're going to get a man's head between your legs and then pick him up and then do a sit down blind. That's your go-to. Uh, speaking entirely in kayfabe, no, it's not. It's very simple, and also a great move to do while blind. Because once you have your hands on them, you don't have to swing and maybe miss. It's at no point have you lost contact with the opponent. I mean, I guess. I just don't... I, I don't... I can't imagine not being able to see and then going, I should pile drive somebody. <laughs> Look, I should pile drive the next motherfucker that comes at me. <laughs> Look, is it an insane thing to do? Yes. But, like, it, it is a product of a combination of two things. Blinded man hits friend with his, own, with his finisher, and Dax's finisher is a pile driver. If Dax had a normal finisher, like, say, some manner of diamond cutter or some manner of stunner, it would look completely normal. Uh, more so, yeah. And the stunner's are, a little weird because you got to turn. In fact, the diamond cutter too. You got to turn around. There's a lot of moving parts there. Just hit a guy. Just hit a guy. Ah, uh, but you might miss. I, I yeah, and I guess once you've grabbed him, you might as well be Zangief. <laughs> I mean, yeah, dude. You do your command grab and you hit him with a spinning pile driver. This is pure Zangief. Uh, I guess. Uh, I don't have a lot to say about this match. I hate that AEW is slowly turning me on Jeff Jarrett. It is working, and I do not I'm like that. So I'm very mad that Jeff Jarrett is slowly getting over as a heel with me. Like, I, I was genuinely enjoying his shtick, and he's he's Jeff Jarrett. He's insufferable. That's one of his defining characteristics, and they're forcing me to question it, and I'm upset. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, maybe he's just better in his old age. Who knows? Uh, Karen Jarrett was here, and um, she did some terrible, nasty things. Uh, the referee tried to eject Sanjay Dutt, and for no reason, Satnam Singh... I feel like on the balance of probability, Satnam Singh. He hadn't done anything yet. No, but you didn't eject anybody else. That's fair. You know what? Satnam hadn't done anything no. wrong. I feel like Satnam only got ejected because he uh, stuck his nose in the ejection of Sanjay, Sanjay Dutt. The ref was ejecting Sanjay, and then Satnam came over and was like, hey, and the ref was like, you know what? You go too. Uh, the ref, which was Mark Briscoe. Yeah. Um, uh, and then uh, Jeff Jarrett got mad when uh, Mark Briscoe took too long to uh, count the pinfall and just started beating the shit out of him. Which is So Sanjay Dutt decided not to leave. <laughs> I mean, why would you? Clearly we've thrown this out yeah. the window. Uh, and, like, I... I liked Mark Briscoe as a special guest referee. Yeah. He had his shit together, he had his head on a swivel, and there were many times when someone was trying to cheat, and Mark Briscoe, like, turned around like a Skyrim NPC who's been alerted. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> uh, I liked his camo-striped referee shirt, and uh, I liked that uh, he forgot to count once because he was like, oh, right, I'm the referee. Yeah, he was, like, just enjoying the match. He was like, oh, shit! Yeah. Uh, uh, FTR went over. I don't even remember what happened. Uh, they went over. That's, yeah. I mean, that's I mean, about the, I mean, uh, the, was basically Jeff Jarrett slapped uh, a Briscoe brother, and, well, I mean, that went how that usually goes for him. Yeah. And, uh, and then FTR won. <laughs> um, 
I'm not as hot on FTR after the whole contract dispute thing. They just haven't won me back yet, and I'm sitting here like a video game character idling, looking at my watch, going, any time now, FTR. I know you can do it. It's like if CM Punk comes back and he just cuts a mediocre promo, and I'm like, oh, okay. Well. Uh, they've, I mean, they've, I was never really all that mad at them over the contract dispute. White, White has always had much more of an issue with this than I have. It's not that I was mad at them. It's that I stopped giving a shit because they were like, well, we're going to WWE. And I was like, oh, okay, you've left my periphery. I'm done with you. I don't need to think about you anymore. And they're like, ha, ah, just kidding, we've come back. And I'm like, well, you unknowingly burned a bridge. Uh, I need to rebuild that bridge. <laughs> and I have not been supplied nails nor wood. Um, speaking of nails and wood, uh, ladder match for the TNT Championship between Christian Cage and Wardlow. What are your thoughts on this match, my robotic companion? Um, I would say that if we're discounting the match that really was not a match, it was, it was very much an angle, um, this was probably the worst match of the night. Mm, no, I think the TBS Championship match was. Yeah, that's fair. That's, yeah. I can understand that opinion. They're pretty close. This was okay. They they did some stuff. It was fine. You know, I had a good time watching it. I don't... I mean, you know what? In that way, I, I didn't have a good time watching the TBS title match. Yeah. So, yeah. You, you're probably right. The TBS match was probably the worst. I wasn't super enthused about this. Uh, the spot where Wardlow accidentally killed the ladder because he forgot that he's fucking gigantic was funny. Um, but um, I, this was... <sighs> this was a stupid angle in the first place. Yeah, basically. This was a stupid angle. Um, Christian not... The, the, all parts of this... this All parts of this buffalo were dumb. Except Arn Anderson. And then Arn Anderson came out and bit a guy's finger off. And um, that was cool. Yeah. Arn Anderson was gold. Arn Anderson has done nothing wrong. Every other part of this has been bad and dumb. Yeah, especially because Arn Anderson keeps looking at Wardlow and going, Why are you doing that? You're stupid. Stop being stupid. Yeah. Be better. Win. And Wardlow <laughs> continues to be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Wardlow swanton bombing off a ladder through two tables for literally no reason. Arn Anderson in the background shaking his head. No, no, stop it. Just beat Just him. Just do a power bomb. You're not what the hell? Uh Wardlow retained his title uh, as whereas, he was always yeah, going that to. That's not a thing for question. I hope this is over now, but he's probably going to fight Luchasaurus, which will be okay. That match will be better. Um, that, that's a better meetup. It's just the match I should have done. 3 minutes of angle. Uh, Jamie Hayter was injured going into this, so we were all pretty sure Tony Storm was going to win. Yeah, she could do some limited stuff, but it's clear she was not able to actually go because they made their women's title match a three-minute affair with approximately an instance of interference from the other members of the Outsiders roughly every ten seconds for that entire three minutes. <laughs> and uh, what outcasts. Outcasts, outsiders, outcasts, outlanders. I, I, keep, yeah, I keep calling them outlanders because that's the name uh, I think of. Whatever. Um, green Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. Yes. Uh, <laughs> wait, which one's green? <laughs> uh, uh, but like uh, the the uh, the heel faction um, really came across like putties for a big portion of this. Well, and that's like, okay, this is what we were talking about at the top of the show. You mentioned this was, you know, mostly done as an angle to for the injured champ, and I agree. However, um, as something you've been saying for a while now, I think the outcasts really needed this. Because, yeah, they have looked like goobers this whole time. Or just petty mean girls, and that's not good. They need something to do. They need a prop. Yeah. They, uh, Jamie Hayter has, partially due to injury, um, and partially on her own, Really fumbled this bag. But she hits harder. Stop it. <laughs> um, she has not impressed with the women's title to any great degree. Tony Storm was, as uh, when she was a babyface, just objectively a more interesting and fun women's champion to watch. Um, I don't like Tony Storm as a heel, really. I, I prefer her face gimmick a lot. But if this is what they're going with, they're... They needed something. They needed They needed the title. They needed a reason for people to bother trying to interact with these dickheads. I, I like Ruby Soho more as a face as well, but, like, their women's division needed heels. So Their women's division needed heels. Soraya is better as a heel. She just is. I know she had the big face pop coming back, but she's better as a heel. Um, 
Ruby Soho, I like fine as a heel. That's she does a good job. Sure, um, she's, but she's, like yeah. Tony Storm, it just doesn't come across as genuine. <laughs> I don't buy it in a way I buy it for the other two. But that's not the hugest deal. And if this, then they need heels, and these heels needed something to do. So put you put the title on Tony Storm because Jamie can't wrestle anyway. Hopefully Jamie's better uh, soon enough. This isn't you know great for their title reign length, but. If Jamie's good enough to wrestle at Wembley, she could take the title back at Wembley Stadium. That'd be sure. a big face pop. Yeah. Everyone would love it. If not, then you got to prioritize getting well. I understand that. But this is going to be good for the outcasts. They're... This gives them a thing that is a reason for them to still be a unit. <laughs> yeah, it, it makes me more interested to watch another segment of theirs, which I haven't been in weeks. Uh, on the contrary, I love the House of Black and Julia Hart. Uh, and they beat the ever-loving Tar out of the acclaimed. I mean, it was a more equal match than I thought they were gonna have. Sure. Uh, good for you. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Uh, you know, job out your your acclaimed or your or your father ass. Uh, but uh, the House of Black absolutely should have and did win here. <clears throat> Uh, I love the open house rules. It provides it, it injects very fun dynamism into uh, what a trios match is going to look like. I'm a little annoyed that people keep not using the optional rule, like or using it for like something dumb. Yeah, like, like the first the time... best friends doing it to ban Julia Hart because all witches are banned from ringside. Gold. The acclaimed not using it at all because we're too good for that. Dumb. <laughs> there, I believe there was also a previous one where they didn't have a uh, like another one. Where yeah, they, where it's just didn't... stop it. Yeah. No, do something Use cool with thing. it. Even if it's something simple that doesn't really factor into the match, yeah, at least you, say I something. I understand the House of Black is mostly going to be going after faces, or faces are going to be going after them because it's an open challenge. So it's not like it's going to be you know, uh, uh, open rule is we always get two guys in the ring, you get one. You're not going to get that because you're not going to be fighting heels most of the time. But you can do stuff like, I want to beat you without any excuses. This is pinfall to a four count. Or, uh, I want to... I, 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 I understand that you guys often use the numbers game to your advantage. We're going to eat. We're going to even that out. This is a tornado tag match. Yeah, that'd be great. Just something fun. Also, I really like tornado tag matches, so... <laughs> uh, or go full Lucha Libre rules with tags. Because that's mostly... one team did that, and that rule. Yeah, yeah, that was that was amazing. Uh, but this match was really good. Yeah, we had the um, the the stupid lights. I use that as a technical term. Well, Taz said there was another one. It's a lighting treatment. In the yeah, business. lighting treatment. Excuse me. Um, the, um, the mirror dimension from Doctor Strange. Uh, I like it here a lot more than in the movie Doctor Strange. Uh, this is I love the mirror dimension. Uh, it is a weird call, but it's not one I hate. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean this wasn't. This was okay. Uh, it was it was a good showing by everybody involved. It was a solid mid card match. No, nothing really else. Didn't get enough uh, Billy Gunn with versus Brody King sure, beating the shit out of each other agree, for my actually. liking. I could have more of that. Um, all right. Uh, the next two matches uh, took up less than ten minutes, and that was a good call. Uh, Jade Cargill beat Ty Valkyrie, who has done nothing to impress me this entire time, uh, in eight and in nearly nine minutes. Whether or not you're the new girl, you do eventually have to distinguish yourself at the anime high school. Um, and Jade Cargill had an awesome dance entrance. That was kind of fun. It was out of character for me. I didn't like it because it didn't seem to fit Jade Cargill. So here's the thing. Uh, she is, as I hear, going to be going away for a while and come back with a bit of a new personality. I'm expecting a face turn. Smart. A plus. Good job. Do that. Uh, I liked Jade Cargill's, uh, if it's you know truly gone, I liked her heel gimmick, but it was dead in the water. It was stale as fuck. I was so tired of watching her do anything. I mean, and that's because this feud has been, well, this, this reign has been unnaturally extended by several months due to leg existence failure. But leg is back now. Leg is back now. Go, you know, do whatever you need to do. Uh, take some time to get the fairy dust on you. Come back with, like, a new... Uh, Face more face personality. I'm sad you will have to broom Mark Sterling because he's never going to turn face. Why would you do that? Um, but <laughs> can't imagine a face Mark Sterling. Um, but I I'm so I, I was I was so I, I, this was a foregone conclusion. Taya Valkyrie is not going to beat Jade Cargill. That's just silly. Um, <laughs> if she was better. Then I could have or seen it. several years younger, maybe. Maybe. Um, regardless, uh, 
afterward Mark gets in the ring and is like, you can't compete with Jade Cargill. Nobody can. I will take any comers. This is stupid. We beat everyone. There's no one left. So someone came out. Yeah. Chris Statlander makes her return with her with her magic knees. And uh, 48 seconds bodies Jade Cargill. Who had just had a match to sure. protect her, her, her level of, of cool. Because she did have the longest undefeated streak in AEW history. And I'm pretty sure that's, that record's going to stand for a long, long time. We can only hope. Um, and she had never lost a match. So you have to protect her when she eventually loses. But you also, I think going away is a smart call because you don't want to avoid the Asuka problem. Yeah. Of once they lose a match, they don't have a gimmick anymore. Um, I think having her take some time is a great play for that. We have our second ever TBS champion. Chris Statlander is back. And Jade Cargill finally isn't just going to eat jobbers every week to artificially inflate her count. Honestly, both title changes happened in the women's division tonight. And I think... That's both good. were the right call. Yeah, yeah both. Were both, right both were not in the best place. This is much healthier on both accounts. Um, speaking of which, the the fatal four way. Hey, guess what? MJF won. Uh, big big surprise. I. You know what? I wouldn't have been mad if MJF had lost. No. I would have been fucking baffled, but I wouldn't have been mad. It is right that he that he won this match. Fucking ruled. <laughs> there was a lot of hate on the build for this angle and like you know Darby Jungle Boy they're not the best promos Sammy Guevara has X-Pac heat um which X-Pac doesn't even have anymore uh Sammy Guevara has Sammy Guevara heat um we can rechristen it yeah. he is the most punchable man in pro wrestling apparently um but uh I really think they did a lot to elevate all of this talent they had a lot of fun with it a lot of moving parts Made sure nobody ever really trusted anybody else. And the match itself used the Fatal 4-Way gimmick better than I have seen in a long time. I struggle to think of a Fatal 4-Way match that made better use of the Fatal 4-Way stipulation. Ever. I'm sure there has been, but I just can't think of one at the moment. For me personally, if you want to watch this pay-per-view, this is the match that is your excuse. Yeah, this, uh, this match I am happy to have paid for. Like, I, I, I am happy to have paid for this pay-per-view for this match alone. The Battle Royal was pretty good, too. The battle, look, there were other good matches on here. This was far and away my match of the night. Um, and it was just a really fucking good wrestling match. Very tight. Didn't did Not a lot of fat on there. Not really much to trim out. And uh, everybody elevated. No one just showed up to do their portion. Everybody yes. made the match better by being in it. And that is a high-ass bar for, for to clear. So I just kudos to everyone involved. Yeah. Uh, MJF um, retains by putting the title on the target of Darby's uh, coffin drop and then uh, headlock takeover in Darby. Um, very brilliant end of the match. Uh, he busted a wing. We don't know how bad, but uh, did a big top rope power bomb and... and jammed his wrist so we'll see is that how, real uh, that one kayfabe and it's hard to say it's aew they don't talk about their injuries like that and that's part of the reason but it's mjf he doesn't have to wrestle between pay-per-views so. yeah so he, he doesn't wrestle again until wembley stadium yeah, it's fine. <laughs> if then if then uh, so uh we move on uh, and it's, it feels weird like i said at the top of the show we don't have a lot to say about all these matches they were what they were good or ill speaking of ill uh we have anarchy in the arena uh the blackpool combat club versus the elite not the whole match, but I think roughly the first half. At least 10 minutes, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's only a 27-minute match, so at, at 30%, if nothing else, was fully ruined for me uh, by just the absolute worst cover of Wild Thing I've ever heard. And I've been to karaoke nights with drunk people. This was actively terrible. It was all right, but it wasn't... I mean, look, okay, if they came out to it and that was the end of it, what a great call. Using a less enjoyable version of the song for the heel John Moxley. To get people to stop singing it. Side note, fewer people were singing Judas. Yeah, way Chris fewer. Chris has finally been enough of a shitbag that fewer people want to sing this Judas. This crowd was also not interested in participating. No, they were a little dead. Yeah. They popped for the big stuff. And they sometimes they do a chant. There wasn't the... a lot of noise. They didn't do the Terminator claps with Kenny Omega. No. It, they weren't... It, it was clearly a Vegas crowd, not an AEW crowd. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, that does make sense to me. If it doesn't make sense to you, let us know in the comments. 
Um, so instead, they they played the song throughout the first ten ish minutes of the match. I I hated it. Yeah, I hated it so much it ruined the first ten minutes of the match for me. It was really it was really insufferable. Um, I wasn't huge looking forward to this match anyway. I like the storyline. I like the angle. I think this is all like you know creatively. Uh, I think this is creatively great. Yeah, bringing the Blackpool Combat Club <laughs> to let's be honest their heel roots, um, and like. There was some struggling before Danielson figured out exactly what his purpose was. They they took them a few weeks to yeah. figure out what their mission statement was, and then they did, and it clicked, and it it, it was it works. Don Callis getting injured also delayed some things in a strange way. Yeah, because I, I I'm pretty sure like the original plan was to have him just fully side with the BCC, and then the BCC cracked his skull open on accident. Yeah, so there had to be like a couple of weeks of Kenny playing for time basically until yeah. Don could come back. And it was. <laughs> It was a little rough around the edges, but I love the idea, and I think they're doing a great job with it as far as they're able to. Uh, it has the, it was the genesis of the best John Moxley promo I've heard in AEW. Yeah, yeah, did good promo work this John, uh, cycle from John. That is what I know you can do every week. Please do so. If you did so, I you might be my favorite AEW wrestler. No, it'll always be MGF. You might be second, uh, <laughs> but it's just. He doesn't usually. He usually is phoning it in to a great degree by grumbling and mumbling like a dad who's forced to walk the dog. Um, and now now it, actually hearing him talk, hearing him deliver a real promo, actually trying, it was, it was re- so refreshing that it made me like this angle more. And I love seeing the Elite back together. Yeah. Because the feud between uh, oh, Kenny and Hangman... Was the thing that bought me into AEW in the first place. Yeah. This is that long-term storytelling, my dude. It's it's very nice to see. I have nothing bad to say about the storytelling. Even with the hurdles they had to eventually leap, they did a great job. Uh, <clears throat> this match was a garbage fire. It was intended to be. But, like, it, it they really rescued it toward the end to the, so that it didn't leave a bad taste in my mouth. Uh, we ended with um, the Elite looking like they were about to go over, which is what I had initially predicted. Same. But uh, because of the way they were leading into it and the Elite did not have a big entrance, I kind of went, uh, oh, they they, uh, they killed the singer. That's what finally stopped the song. Thank you very much, the Elite, for killing that fucking song. Um, Taz said the name of the band like nine times. I still have no idea. I'm never going to know because I don't... I. Uh, look, if I see you again in the future band, I want to have a fresh impression of you. Yeah. You should be happy that I don't remember that this is you. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, it uh, looked like the Elite were going to go over, and uh, here comes a masked Konosuke Takeshita. Um, he is on Don Callis' side. He's evil now. They lay out Kenny Omega, and I believe it was Uter. Uh, Uter? Yuta. <laughs> 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 I 